Rust tip number one, if you hold alt and click on this splitting slide bar, you can now just type in the amount of that item that you want to split. Rust tip number two, if an animal's chasing you and you want to lose that aggro, all you've got to do is jump on a wall. Just an FYI, while we watch this animal flee like I'm the Grim Reaper, if you knew both of these first two tips, there's probably nothing that you're going to learn in this video. Seriously, I don't want to waste your time, so you're free to go. Rust tip number three involves the mixing table, and while potions are extremely useful, this is not the tip. The tip is use a mixing table to craft gunpowder. The reason for this is it's going to be faster, which means you can go out and live a full life. <laughs> Who am I kidding? We're Rust players. We don't have a full life. But you can also save 10 charcoal per gunpowder. Tip number four is that you can wear a pumpkin as a helmet. It doesn't really do anything, but if you get a face made for radio, it does help. Tip number five relates to food and rivers. Food grows by rivers. Most of you probably knew that, but there's a few people that are starving on a beach that need to know this tip. Tip number six is for all of you grubs out there. Did you know you can hide in the cars that spawn with resources? Yeah, you can get right behind that box so when it gets completely looted, you blow someone away with a shotgun. It's not fair and you're going to be called a lot of very mean things, but it probably will get you some loot. And if you don't have dreams of becoming a grub, I apologize for that one. Tip number seven is for all of you that are at the outpost looking for gunpowder. If you want gunpowder at the outpost, you can buy a smoke grenade for five scrap, and that is going to net you 18 gunpowder and 25 metal fragments. Tip number eight relates to how to get a free box at the outpost. It's as easy as making yourself die. I'm not going to say the word because YouTube doesn't like it. Now, if you die and you have a workbench level one item on you, your body is going to last for 20 minutes. If it's a level two item, it's going to last for 40 minutes. And a level three item, it's going to last for 60 minutes. These values can be adjusted on different servers, so do take note of that. It's very easy. You can transfer items to and from your body without any problem. Now, tip number nine is if you do have a bag instead of a body, now to transfer items is a little bit more complicated. What you have to do is drag the item from the bag, drop it onto the item that you want to put into the bag, and those two items are going to switch. At this point, you can no longer add extra items to the bag, so make sure you die with a lot of stuff if you want to store a lot of stuff. Tip number 10, which involves the lighthouse. Did you know the lighthouse has stairs running up the middle of it? Yes, you probably did know that. If you jump on the railing of those stairs when you're going from the bottom, you can jump across to that pole and live out your dreams of becoming a pole dancer. After you've gotten done with that, you can jump over to the platform that's a little bit higher up, and now you've just found a way to get to the recycler without going the classic route. Tip number 11, at the supermarket, you can jump on top of the recycler, jump on top of the fence, and now you can get onto the roof. You can also do it from that electric circuit box on the other side. Also, did you ever look at the sign on top of the supermarket? Take a look. And now that you know what the supermarket is really selling, it's time for tip number 12, the mining outpost. You can jump on top of the tires and get on top of the mining outpost. It's actually a great way to camp the recycler there. Tip number 13, if you want to stop people from building twig floors on your base, all you've got to do is put an item where that twig floor would go. It's going to block the twig floor from being built, and now you no longer have to deal with that. For number 14, we're going to talk about how to make ladders impossible to place. First off, ladders can't be placed on a chain link fence. They also can't be placed on a splitter. So all you've got to do is put down a chain link fence and then put splitters where the ladder could otherwise go. And now ladders are no longer placeable on that wall. You could also just cover a wall and splitters and have a wall that ladders can no longer go on. That's a lot of splitters though. Tip number 15, because although tip 14 could be considered two tips, I only like one tip at a time. Now. Going into tip number 15, if you want to destroy your own walls or raid a base that you have TC on, all you've got to do is use a few shotgun traps and a lot of handmade shells. Put the shotgun traps down, deauthorize yourself from the TC, jump on top of the shotgun traps, give it a minute, and bing bang boom, you've just destroyed a wall. And yes, this method can be cheaper than traditional methods, although it does make a lot of noise. At this point in the video, a lot of Rust YouTubers would probably put in a skin gambling sponsorship. But in my experience, a lot of those sponsorships are hosted by sites that are less than legit. And the last thing I want to do is cause anyone watching this video to get cheated or feel cheated. So instead of doing a sponsorship, I'm going to shamelessly ask you to do one thing. 
please hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. By making it this far, you've already helped support my channel and I do appreciate that. But if you hit subscribe, you're helping me on my journey to 100,000 subscribers. I've been at this whole YouTube thing for over 11 years now. It's a crazy journey. It's been a ton of fun. I've really enjoyed it, but it'd be awesome to just get that plaque and be able to see, hey, I did a thing. So if you can, hit the subscribe button. If you can't, I understand. Let's move on with the video. Tip number 16, we're talking about the airfield and what you can do until parachutes come to get out of those control towers faster. All you've got to do is jump from the balcony, land on that wall. You will take a little bit of damage, but you'll survive and a lot of enemies coming up will have no idea where you went. You're basically a ghost. Tip number 17, some guns take too long to reload. If you're using one of those guns and want to reload faster, all you've got to do is have a turret available. Drop the gun into the turret, turn the turret on, turn the turret off, grab the gun, and it is reloaded. Tip number 18, if you want to equip something that you're looting, all you got to do is hold alt to click on that item and it's going to auto equip. Number 19, even if you can't be shot at a recycler, you can still be pushed off of that recycler. Number 20, relating to tactical gloves, did you know they lower your recoil? 21, if you've got a jackhammer that's broken, drop it into a workbench, click on the jackhammer, and now you can just refill it. You don't even need to pay to repair it. You get a lot more jacking done for free. Number 22, those snorkeling tanks, if they run out of oxygen, you can repair them and get more oxygen. Tip number 23, rust doesn't have to cost you, your family, friends, your kids, and a divorce. A lot of you will probably never get to that point because you started playing rust before you got there. But if you want to play the game and have a life, you can also just run quests, get a gun real quick, and go out and slaughter some newbies. It's just as much fun and a lot less time. Tip number 24, while it is a bit embarrassing to post footage of yourself slaughtering nakeds on YouTube, it's more embarrassing to, actually, I'm not going to go there, but did you know there's actually pay to win skins in Rust? Yeah, it's a mind blowing thing, but there are a lot of them and it's probably worth it to buy them because it does give you a pretty big advantage. And back to the outpost for tip number 25. If you got 40 scrap and you need a lot of cloth, you can buy tactical gloves and recycle them. It's gonna net you 200 cloth, but if you wanna stop somewhere along the way, you can also get some rope or threads out of them. Number 26, if you middle click an item that's in your quick craft menu, you're gonna craft five of those items. Tip number 27 is, did you know you can control the hot air balloon? Yeah, you can make it go up and down with the red button, but what I'm talking about is control the direction that it goes in. If you look at these flags in the windsock on the hot air balloon, it's gonna blow in a different direction depending on what altitude you're at. That direction is the direction that your hot air balloon is going to be going in. So if you wanna go in the right direction, climb to the altitude that's appropriate, and then just keep yourself there by hitting that button on and off. It's not as good as a mini copter, but it works in a pinch. And finally, one bonus tip to leave everybody with. Rust doesn't have to be about just getting the most boom, killing the most people, or raiding the most bases. You can make it your goal to do something amazing, go on an adventure, tell a good story, or just get to end game. You don't have to devote your life to this game to have fun. Set goals, hit them, and then call it a day and go touch some grass or maybe touch something else if you really want to have some fun. Learn something, make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe, and until next time, peace.